students welcome back to the next english video today we'll be discussing on a new unit unit 10 animal behavior the topics that we will be discussing today are informative text news report descriptive poem rhyming scheme and meter so let's begin with the class informative text Informative text educates the reader about a specific topic. For example, a book that provides information on a vacation to a specific place or a non-fiction book that examines World War II. All examples of informative text. Informative text can appear in newspaper, it can appear in textbooks, reference materials and research paper in our textbook information is been given about a certain wild animals now let's learn how to write an informative text or what are the steps we have to include when we are writing an informative text there are seven steps to succeed in the informative text writing here step one choose the topic for your informative text remember that the aim of informative text is not to impose your view but to inform and educate the audience on a topic you have chosen step two create the outline that will organize your facts in a logical way. List all the questions you have about your topic and what you are going to perform. Step 3. Gather all the necessary information for the work from at least 4 sources. Research your topic online and in a library. Find authoritative, credible sources Next, analyze the facts and research details found. Step 4 Here, step 4 is the introduction. Present the topic and grab your audience attention. Give some background information about the keywords and terminology. Compare the viewpoints and facts on a controversial subject or different sources data. Start with a general idea which will gradually get more and more specific. Step 5 here. Step 5 is the body portion. Here, provide all the necessary information and materials to target your audience. Use various sources, facts, and expert judgment. Make sure all your facts are accurate. Step 6 the conclusion restart about the seriousness of issue and summarize the facts for and against your main thesis never introduce some new information or ideas in the conclusion the main purpose for your conclusion is to round off the essay by summing up the last step that is step seven analyze all the work done Think whether all the information have been added or provided and if there could arise any prejudices in the audience according to the material presented. Remember, informative essay or informative text is not a persuasive essay or text. It should be objective and impartial. Your writing should be both informative and interesting without making an argument or imparting the author's viewpoint. It is the best way to explain something that is complicated in an uncomplicated way. So this is all about an informative text. Next, news report. A news report explains a real life event. It presents a lot of information but does not use a lot of words. Following points should be included when you're writing a news report. First is a headline. A headline tells what the story or the news is all about. Second is a photo. A photo should be related to the headline of the news report. 
illustrating the characteristics of the event. Next, a byline. A byline shows who wrote the story, that is, the name of the writer. Next, a place line. A place line is where the report was written. The place of the report depends on where the incident took place. Next, a lead paragraph. A lead paragraph tells the most important facts, that is, who, what, where, when, why, and how, that is, who are, whom are you talking about, what is it all about, where did it happen, when did it happen, why did it happen, and how did it happen. So this W5H should be included in a lead paragraph. Next is a body paragraph. A body paragraph contains more information and details. Next, the closing quotations. The closing quotation gives something to think about. So, this point should be included when you are writing a news report. Descriptive poem. There are different types of poem that we have learned so far and now we are going to learn what is descriptive poem. So poetry can take various forms but always expresses a message in a unique way. If it be of any kind of poem, the poem is always unique and it always expresses a message in its own way, often with rhyme or rhythm. However, some of the most intensely expressive poetry is highly descriptive and uses languages that creates images and feelings beyond that of other literary work. So, this descriptive poetry is unlike narrative poetry is known not necessarily for telling a story but for its deep depiction of a person, animal or inanimate object. Today, under the poetry section, we will be learning about a different one. In the previous videos, we have been learning about a different poetic devices. And today, we will be learning about a rhyming scheme and a meter. So, what is a rhyming scheme? Rhyming scheme is a poet's deliberate pattern of lines that rhyme with another line in a poem or a stanza. The rhyme scheme or pattern can be identified by giving ant word that rhyme with each other the same letter. For instance, take the poem the easiest one which we have already read when we were still a kid, that is Twinkle Twinkle Little Star written by Jane Taylor in 1806. So let's see the rhyming scheme of this poem. The rhyme scheme of this poem can be determined by looking at the end word in each line. The first line ends in the word star, the ending, that is twinkle, twinkle, little star. So the end word is star. And the second line ends in the word are. So here, how I wonder what you are. So here in these two lines, we can see that the star and R are rhyming together. So they both can be given or are given the letter A and A, which signifies that we have found the first rhyming scheme in the poem. Next, the third line ends in the word high and the fourth line ends in sky. These two words don't rhyme with the first two words that is star and R, so they can be given the letter B. So far, we have a rhyme scheme of A, A, and B, B. So here, stay with me, it gets easier. The fifth ending word is a repeat star, and so is the sixth end word, are so. Both of this word get the letter A as well. So, the rhyming scheme for this First stanza or the first paragraph of the poem is A A B B 
AA. So remember, last word of every line should rhyme with the other. Next, meter. What is a meter? When you go to the eye doctor to check your vision, they sit you down in front of what's called a phoropter and flip through a series of lenses to determine the best one for your eyes. Is this better or is this better? When you get the wrong lens combination, the word blurs and you have trouble reading letters. When you get the right combination, those letters sharpen and you can read properly. Reading a poem's meter aloud is a similar way to test your ears. Consider this line of poetry opening line to Edgar Allan Poe's poem, The Raven. This one. Once upon a midnight dreary, while upon the weak and weary. Or this one. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I ponder weak and weary. The first one. Am I right? So here, the above readings I have read in the opposite matter, meter and the sound funny and unnatural. So how do we describe these differences? The most common way to do so in English is to follow the stresses in each phrase of the line. As you probably know, words in the English languages are composed of a set of stressed and unstressed syllables. In poetry, these syllables are often arranged to create repeating sonic unit what literary critics call fit that is fit apart that compose the meter of a given poem so my dear students this is all for today's video thank you and stay safe